Okay, so brand new setup guide today for Play Night users out there. And firstly, if you're new to Play Night, I'll just break it down. Play Night is pretty much an absolutely free, 100% free alternative to the famous Launchbox. Uh, there's no hidden costs within Play Night, it is free. Uh, so today you're in the right place. If you're a Play Night user and you love Commodore 64, I'm going to get you set up using this, using Play Night as the launcher. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the best Commodore 64 emulator out there to download again, which is absolutely free. I'm going to be showing you the best configurations for this and also how to get your controller loaded up and working within this emulator. I'm going to be showing you some different file extensions for Commodore 64 games because let's be honest if you're new to Commodore 64 emulation you'll probably come across lots of different file extensions on your games and some of you is going to be thinking well which one's which and which one works best so you're in the right place I'm a big Commodore 64 fan and I've covered C64 on my channel endless times across multiple different platforms for emulation so I'm also going to be showing you how to configure your controller in this emulator and how to switch ports so you need to check this one out if you love Commodore 64 and you're a Play Night fan. Okay then, first things first, if you liked today's video, make sure to subscribe, hit notifications and also like so you get up-to-date emulation content as I release it, which is pretty much every day. And if you're into Commodore 64 and you want to see this on different platforms, then check those out on my RetroBat video setup guides, Launchbox, Batacera and beyond. I've covered Commodore 64 and Amiga just endless times. I love it. One of my favourites. So what we're going to do first is what I always do for my Play Night tutorials. So I'm going to just assume you've never come across this before. So first of all, I'm going to just download Play Night itself. And the link's going to be in my description for everything I'm downloading today. So here's Play Night. And as we can see, this is the actual GUI, the graphical user interface. So very similar to something like Launchbox. And that's why I refer to it as a free 100% alternative. It's very cool stuff. So if we just scroll down, we're going to find download. Just download this one. And once you've downloaded the Play Night installer, let's just open this up. So if I double left click here on the installer, and if we go to options first, now under options, we got the opportunity here to install this to wherever we want. Now, I always recommend making a quick new folder on your desktop. So right click on your desktop, new and folder and i always say call this somewhat simple like play night so you know what it is now by default as we can see the destination folder to install play night is in users my computer's name app data local and sometimes that can be a bit of a pain to find so i'm going to just go to browse and from browse if i go to desktop i'm going to just pop this in that play night folder that i've just created on my desktop and press ok and install and just give this a little while to install okay so once that's installed you are now in the gui or graphical user interface of play night and this is very empty we've done nothing with this yet but what we do need to do is make this happen. So let's just close Play Night down for now. And that installer, we no longer need that. So if you right click on it and delete, that's gone. We no longer need that. And everything has now been installed into this folder on my desktop. So we got several different folders in here by some DOL files. And, you know, there's lots in there, but we don't necessarily need this right now. So let's come out of this and we're next going to download and install RetroWatch to do this. So there's plenty of Commodore 64 standalone emulators out there, but really RetroWatch using one of the Commodore 64 cores is by far the easiest way around this. Uh, so what we're going to do is go over to RetroWatch and again, the link's going to be in my description for this and just go to the download tab. And if we just scroll down a little bit, the version you want 
is download stable. So just download this one and wait for that to download and it shouldn't take too long. And if you're a little bit freaked out by using RetroArch, don't worry, I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. So once you've downloaded RetroArch, just double left click on the installer. And if you get a little pop-up saying user account publish or make changes to your device, just press yes on this. And just go for the installation process through RetroArch Install. So press next and just agree. Now destination folder, this is up to you again, just like play night, wherever you want to install this. But I'm going to right click on my desktop, go to new and folder. And I'm going to install this to my desktop just to make it easier to get to should I need it later on. So I'm going to go destination folder, click on browse, desktop, and RetroArch, and press OK. Next. And if you don't have DirectX, then just click on DirectX and then install that too, and press Next. And just press next again and just press install just let that do a thing so this bit should take a little while there's a lot there to install for RetroArch and while this is installing I'm going to quickly give you a little rundown of different C64 game extensions so let me show you what I mean if I go to my C64 games folder here I've selected four different file extensions or four different types of game you can get for Commodore 64 so Fire Lords just here is a classic C64 game I used to play as a kid. And to date, I still have no idea what to do in this game, but the fault is there and I do like this one. <laughs> so this is a dot tap and dot taps are images of cassette tapes. So if you was in Britain back in the day, uh, most of us would have had cassette tapes and dot taps or T64s are images of yeah cassette tapes. So these take a long time to load, you know, five minutes sometimes, even 10 minutes on some games. So if you want long loading experiences, then download .tap files. Uh, .programs, .prgs, these are very quick to load up, literally a few seconds. And we also got .d64, so more popular in parts of Europe, in America, discs are known as .d64. So obviously these are a lot quicker to load than dot taps and finally we got dot crt and these are kind of cartridge images so these are by far the quickest loaders you'll find out there and if you can find a game in that file extension just like dot prg choose these over dot tap and dot d64 but i've got all four of these file types and i'm going to show you these loading in real time so you can decide for yourself which one works best for you so RetroArch is now installed and we can close this down so just press finish and let's just get rid of this xe just here for the RetroArch installer just delete that and first thing we're going to want to do is open up RetroArch so just double left click on this and we've got a few settings to do inside here so just maximize that screen for now now, if you're new to RetroArch, you've got a system and it uses cores. So cores are kind of like a very small version of emulators and cores are pretty much exclusive to RetroArch is what RetroArch refers to. So we're going to download a core for Commodore 64. So main menu, online updater and core downloader. Now, under here, you're going to see every system that RetroWatch for PC supports. And we're going to see Commodore Amiga and different versions of Commodore 64. So the one I'm going to suggest doing, really, is going to be device times 64 fast. I'm also going to download the accurate version of this as well, which is times 64 SC. So we've now installed these, and obviously this is in window mode. So once we import this into Play Night, we're going to want to boot our games up in full screen. So we're going to go back to the side here by pressing left, settings, and just scroll down one to video and go to full screen mode and just turn this one to on. And that's it for now. So whilst we're in RetroWatch, just go back to main menu 
And I'm going to go down to configuration file and save current configuration. And then just go down to quick retro arch in NASAP part done. So what we're going to do next is actually import this to play night. And once we've imported, I'm going to go through video settings and everything else. So open up play night. So firstly, we're going to import RetroArch and also import those C64 cores. So go to the top left where the controller is, library. And then from here, I'm going to go to configure emulators and click on import. And then once we're here, we're going to just go to scan folder. And from scan folder, I'm going to go to desktop and choose that RetroArch folder. And press select folder and just let this scan. And we're next going to press import once that's been scanned. And now we can see RetroArch, which is under configure emulators. And we can also see those two RetroArch Commodore 64 cores, which is Vice Times 64 and Vice Times 64 SC. And once that's done, just go down to save. And now we're going to add the games. So my C64 games are on my desktop. So I'm going to go back to that controller. And this time go to add game and then down to emulate its game and go down to add scanner tab and then scan with emulator. We want to select retro arch and then profile is going to be times 64. That's vice times 64 for this one. Both of these are going to work the same. And we're going to go to scan folder and desktop and just highlight where your games are. In my case, they're just here. So highlight that folder, select folder and start scan. And we can now see that Play Night has scanned all four of my games. So we've got Fire Lord, All Tower, Rambo Free and Sam's Journey. So import. And as you can see, these are now imported into Play Night and each one of these should have cover art. And here we go. So firstly, before we get into video settings, let's actually test if everything's been imported correctly. So I'm going to just test one of these before I go into different settings within RetroWatch. So everything's important, as we can see. And Alt Tower is in a quick loading file extension, which is a .prg. So let's just quickly load this one up and see if this is going to work. So just press play. So I've just pressed escape on my keyboards twice to exit RetroWatch and take us back to Play Night. So what I'm going to do next is actually show you where we can download Commodore 64 games for absolutely free, or in some cases we do have to pay for these. So a couple of websites I use and I recommend is CSB. So this is the C64 scene database, and this has been on the internet since the internet began more than likely. I've been using this website for years. And the easiest way to find games on this is if we go to latest releases, 
you got a list of games just here and under type we got crack so the cracks are pretty much games which someone's added cheats to also known as trainers and if you like Commodore SID chip music, then you've also got C64 music. So just download the file. And we've also got demos here. So demos are pretty much uh, people experimenting with Commodore 64 programming and pushing things to their limits. And that type of thing has been going on for years in the C64 community. So for example, if I want to download a game, I'm going to just randomly choose Super 8 Football. Uh, what we're going to do here is just download the game and they'll likely come in .zip, but we need these to be in, say, .d64 or .tap or whatever. So just download your game. And inside your zip folder, you'll find the D64 file. So let's just put this one onto the desktop. And another website, which I really recommend, it's especially for modern day Commodore 64 games, is a little website called itch.io. So this is itch.io, and itch.io is pretty much designed for indie developers, uh, developing games for Windows, like indie games, and lots of different 8-bit systems, so ZX, Spectrum, and Commodore 64. So if I put into itch.io Commodore 64 and search, we'll get a lot of sort of almost new homebrew type Commodore 64 games in there, some really good new games here. So some of these are going to be free, and some of them you'll have to pay for. So this is what I was just playing, Old Tower, and that's a free game, and it's very cool. And I also find of itch.io, if you just type in C64, some uploaders of their games will choose to name them as C64. So that's also worth looking at. And a couple here I recommend by far is Leicester, Night and Grail, which was a Cytronic game. And they've got their own website, but Cytronic also uses itch.io to sell their digital games. And I totally, totally, totally recommend Sam's Journey, which I'm going to show you in a minute anyways. So let's open up Play Night again. And this time around, I'm going to do some video settings. For this, I'm going to choose Rambo 3. Rambo 3 is in a disk image file extension, which is D64. And I'm going to go to play with this. And I'm going to let this load and then go through some video settings. And yes, that sound you can hear is the mechanism emulate in the 1541 Commodore disk drive. So you also notice just here that I've got a virtual keyboard and on a lot of Commodore 64 games, uh, definitely the cracked versions, you're going to need a virtual keyboard to access certain things before starting a game. So I'm pressing select on my PS3 controller, which is wired, by the way. And this brings up the virtual keyboard. And most of the time, we just need to press space, which is this one I'm highlighted on here, to bypass screens. And on other screens, like this one just here for Rambo 3, it's asking us uh, for F1 in F3 and F5 buttons, which are function buttons. So open up your virtual keyboard and you can choose these by just pressing on F1, F3 and F5. And you can see in the background that's actually working. And something else I'm going to tell you whilst I'm in here is that most Commodore 64 games were programmed and still programmed using port 2. Uh, remember, Commodore 64 had two ports for joysticks. And um, yeah, if you want to swap ports, if your game isn't responding to your controller, that's likely the reason. So to swap ports through RetroArch, just go down to Joy P, and that's going to swap over from port 1 to port 2 or vice versa. And obviously to start a game, just press on Space. So I've actually, I'm actually running this .d64 now in real time. I'm not editing it, so it'll just give you an idea 
for the length of time you have to wait for uh, this particular file extension to load. And once we're in the game, I'm going to be showing you video settings too. So from within the game, as you can see, we're now in the RetroWatch menu. And to do this, I've just pressed PS button on my PS3 controller. And this is going to give us access to different things. So from quick menu, we can see straight away, we've got save state and load state. So I'm going to quickly show you this. Now I'm going to press on save state. And if I go back to quick menu again and load state, so great game Rambo 3, one of my childhood favorites. It's just a shame that the film was pretty well there. Yeah. So, what we're going to do next is look at video settings. And if we drop down further to core options and just go down to you see video, Vic 2 filter we can actually add some blur to the VIC-2 chip on here. So for example, if I put this on on 50% blur and come back out and I'm pressing circle on my controller to come out of this, quick menu, resume. So that's just added a little bit of blur and it's almost give it a bit like a CRT type image. So, there's that option to play around with if you really want to make your C64 games look old school. And back down to video again. And I'm going to take away this blur. It's not really my type of thing. And if you go down further to Vic 2 color palette, you can change the styles of the color on the screen. So if I was to go down to say uh, RGB, let's back out of this. Quick menu, resume. <laughs> And i got to quickly turn that off because that's really done my eyes in. But you get the point. So that's going to be under core options, video. And Vic2 color palette. So, yeah, that's very really bright. But you've got a choice here of different styles of color palettes to use. So I'm going to just keep this to internal and go back into the game. And I think that looks a bit more natural, uh, but that's up to you to experiment with. And of course, that's under core options and video. And just like the Vice standalone emulator, if you go into settings, you have lots of different uh, brightness settings, gamma settings, and everything else. And this is all included as its core in RetroWatch. And if you're interested in Commodore 64 Vice, then I've done a couple of standalone emulators in my 
micro emulation playlist. So check that one out. Uh, color depth right at the bottom. Put this on to 24 bit, which is millions, and it will give some variation in different changes of colors. And also under quick menu, if you find your controller that don't work, even though you've swapped or potentially tried to swap those ports around with the virtual keyboard, it's worth going under your quick menu. And if you scroll down to controls, under port one controls, just make sure device type is selected as RetroPad. And also for port two, make sure this one selected is RetroPad as well. And if we go back to main menu and go down to settings, let's go to video from here. If we go down to scaling, let's turn integer scaling on. And as you can see in the background, that image of Rambo 3 has suddenly reduced in size. So it's a bit more condensed, but it looks not so pixelated. And some of you might like this, some of you might not. And go down to aspect ratio and we can change the size of the game itself. So if I select on full, You'll see that the image in the background is now gone almost widescreen, very stretched. But of course, Commodore 64 games today are from an era where 4x3 is its original size of ratio. But if you do want a full screen, then take off integer scaling. As you can see, that's now reduced in size. Aspect ratio again, put this to full. And there you go, you've got a full screen. So let's go back into the game and see how this looks for now. So as you can see, it's fairly stretched, but really that's just a matter of uh, taste. And if you go through those video settings, then you can easily find what best suits you. So personally, I'm going to go back and change this to 4x3. Let's take a look at some more video settings. So by linear filtering, it's going to add a slight blur, as you'll see in a second. So just turn this on, and that's going to restart the game. Quick menu, resume. So as you can see, that has added a little slight blur. Uh, back to settings video again. And if we drop right to the bottom of video, you're going to find video filter. And we can add things like scan lines to our games from here. So that's really up to you to decide which filter you're most likely going to use. I know scan lines are pretty popular. So let's just choose scan line two times dot filter for this. So select this one, come back out. Quick menu, resume. So what I'm going to do is just from here, main menu, configuration file, and save your settings because RetroArch not all the time saves everything automatically. So save that and quit out of RetroArch. And this is going to bring us back to Play Night. Now, for us to see those scan lights, I don't think Rambo 3 was the best way to see that. So I'm going to open up Sam's Journey. And Sam's Journey is in .crt file extension. And again, I'm going to load this one in real time so you can see for yourself how quick this loads in comparison to Rambo 3, which I just did. So play. Run stop was a key on the Commodore 64 keyboard. You do need to use that now and again. So to do that, run stop.
So as you can see, those scan lines are a bit more clear now to see in that. And just remember to go to all those video settings. It's a combination I'm using of quick menu, core options, and then video. And that's where most of your video settings are for colors of your game. And under settings in RetroArch, video, and you'll find scaling pretty useful for changing the sizes of your ratio that you want. And whilst I'm in RetroArch, what I'm going to do is just quickly show you how to import Commodore 64 games into RetroArch itself. So almost like a dual setup guide. So if I go down to import content. So to do this, I'm going to go to manual scan, content directory, C drive. And right at the bottom, we're going to find users. And my name of my computer is Jamie. And my games are on my desktop. So select this one, C64 games, scan this directory. And right at the bottom, just press on start scan. Come back out. And right at the bottom just there, we have a C64 game section up here. And I can run my games from Women Retro Watch if I wish, rather than Play Night. So let me just show you this working very quickly. All tower, run. And from here, we got two C64 cores that we downloaded. So C64 Vice, just use this to run. And here we go. So again, just get in the habit of saving your settings. So configuration file, save current configuration, and then quit RetroArch. And that's it. So you're also going to notice that it's automatically downloaded our artwork for us. If you don't like this artwork, we can change this and we can also change the appearance of Play Night. So just here at the top, you can toggle between these and that's going to give us different layouts. But if you don't like the look of that artwork that is automatically downloaded, it's very easy to change this. For example, if I want to change Rambo 3, what I do is right click, edit, and then media. And just here, we can delete that artwork that is automatically downloaded. Just delete that. And we can use something like Google to download our own image to import into this to substitute the automatic download of that game's art. So let's open up Google. And the version I had Rambo 3 on when I was a kid was the Hit Squad label by Ocean. So I'm going to just right click on that image on Google, save image as, desktop, save. And if I go back to Play Night, under Edit Game Details, I'm going to push on the Select Cover button, desktop, and just double left click on my artwork there. I've just downloaded. And I'm going to go to Save. And there we go, we've now got the Hit Squad Rambo 3. And it don't end there. If we go back there again, we can go to Edit. Under Media, we can even give this a background image. So again, use Google, and we can look for a background image for this. So very quickly, I'm going to just say select this one. This one's likely going to be very blurred or stretched. But we're going to try this, and that's up to you to put your time into it and make this look really good. So save the image as desktop save and back in play night if i go to background image plus let's just select this png image i've just downloaded save and if i go back here under rambo 3 i will now have this in the background as you can see and finally in play night if you really want to get fancy if you go to the general tab just here you can change the description of what this game is about, but it automatically does this for you pretty much. We can add other bits and pieces to it, such as age ratings, uh, region. So in this case, this particular game is Europe, I believe. So just remember to save everything. And whilst we're here inside of Play Night, let me just remind you, you can turn this into a full screen mode. So go back to the controller. And underneath switch to full screen mode, it says F11. Make a note of this is going to exit you back to the windowed mode. So if we press on here for now.
And I'm now going to loot Fire Lord, which is the dot tap file extension. So again, this one's going to be in real time. So yeah, that's the dot tap image, which is like I've been saying, like a set image of a Commodore 64 game. That's Fire Lord. Uh, I had this one originally on a Commodore format cover tape, uh, which was known as Power Pack. So I don't think anyone else in the world would have this. I think that's just Britain only. And of course, once we're back into play night, once you quit out your game, just remember to exit it. Just press F11 on your keyboard. And that's going to bring us back into the window mode. So that's it for my Play Night Retro Watch and C64 setup guides. Like I said at the start of the video, if you're a big Commodore 64 geek like myself, do check out my playlists. I've covered this multiple times now on uh, Retro Back Front End, on Launchbox, Retro Watch itself. 
Uh, I've done many standalone emulator setup guides such as Vice 64, CCS 64, and loads. You know, the list is endless. I've also covered lots of Commodore Amiga too. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you've seen today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming Play Night content as well as other emulation, retro emulation content that I upload every day pretty much. And also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram. And also I'm asking for small donations at the moment. I'm planning on expanding my channel by covering portable devices so i'm just asking for a little donations from my subscribers so i can save up to buy something decent enough to give you additional setup guides but until next time stay retro